the glorification of violence in our society. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. Violent video games and the effect they potentially have on people seems to be a big talking point at the moment. Of course, this is nothing new. People have been blaming video games for all kinds of shit for the last 30 or so years. Violent movies are fine, violence on TV is fine, but Doom 2016 is the literal spawn of Satan and is solely responsible for every mass shooting in the last three years. Obviously no one truly believes that, but today I want to answer the question once and for all. Do video games make us violent? No. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. I put a lot of work and research into it. I had to like, go find that graph and download it to my computer. That was a fucking nightmare, let me tell you. But it was worth it to make my viewers happy. I'll see you guys soon. Peace out. Oh, okay then. Yes, it's easy to show graphs like this and say something like, this proves video games aren't to blame. But it's a bit more complicated than that. Yes, it's true that video games are sold all over the world, but only the USA has a gun problem. But that's mostly due to the fact that guns are either incredibly difficult to purchase or flat out illegal in many of the other countries on that list. But it should still be obvious to anyone with a brain that video games aren't to blame for real world violence. I mean, in Grand Theft Auto, you can literally mow down pedestrians at 100 miles per hour. But how often do you hear of a person getting in their car and doing something similar in real life after playing a GTA game? The Mortal Kombat titles are some of the most brutal games around, and yet you don't see people out in the streets slicing each other's arms off with swords. People are able to differentiate between fantasy and reality, and that's why most violent acts in games are never recreated in real life. There have been moments, however, where a video game has released and has contained content so over the top that it's hard not to wonder how children would react to seeing such brutality. The no Russian missing in Modern Warfare 2 is one of the most infamous levels in any video game. In it, you play as an undercover CIA agent who has to take part in a mass shooting in an airport to win the trust of a Russian terrorist group. The mission can be incredibly uncomfortable to play through, but it's worth noting that you are never forced to pull the trigger during the entire mission, and you can even skip the mission entirely if you want. I can't imagine a level like this being created in a game today, especially with all the mass shootings currently happening in the US, but I would also find it hard to believe that anyone would want to start shooting up a real airport after playing this mission. The reality is that when people play missions like No Russian, they know that it's not real. They notice the repeating character models. They notice the poor ragdoll physics. They notice the lack of bullet wounds on the civilians. There is no question that if anyone bore witness to hundreds of civilians being gunned down in real life, they would be scarred for life. PTSD is an actual thing, you know? I have had a lot of respect for Jim Sterling for years now. The man just knows what he's talking about. And in one of his best videos, he touches on why video game violence just doesn't compare to real world violence. To prove his point, he showed a video of R. Bud Dwyer. Dwyer was a politician who shot and killed himself live on TV because he was being accused of a crime he felt he did not commit. The video was very difficult to watch. In fact, I watched most of it with my hands covering my face. I'm not going to show the video here because it's very disturbing, but Jim proved his point. A huge amount of people commented on the video saying how they weren't able to watch the entire thing because they just found it too disturbing. Actual hardcore gamers who were used to killing thousands upon thousands of people in video games couldn't even sit through a two minute black and white grainy video of a man shooting himself despite the fact that they were apparently seeing and doing much worse in the virtual world. It is also worth noting that many of the most violent video games ever made feature no parts where you're forced to murder actual people. Very few video games are as gory or fucked up as Dead Space, and yet Isaac Clarke never shoots a single human being during the entire game. Doom 2016 is absolutely brutal at times, but again, all that brutality is being directed towards fictional demons. And in Wolfenstein, you're gunning down Nazis, and as we all know, they're not human either. But to truly answer the question 
on whether or not video games are making us more violent, I think I need to look at a game that crosses all the lines. A game that actively encourages you to take pleasure in the slow, brutal murder of your enemies. A game so over the top that many people still consider it to be the most violent game ever made, even 15 years after its release. Manhunt is a snuff film simulator developed by Rockstar Games and originally released in 2003 for the PS2. An Xbox and PC version was released in 2004. The game was well received by critics for the most part, with many reviewers praising the stealth gameplay and horrific violence. However, a lot of critics had issues with the poor camera controls and finicky shooting. The game sold over a million copies and was considered successful enough to warrant a sequel. Upon release, Manhunt was met with a lot of controversy, thanks in no small part to the gratuitous amount of blood and gore in the game. Manhunt was banned in New Zealand and Australia. Many of the companies involved with issuing video games age ratings found Manhunt's content deeply disturbing and claimed that the game simply revolved around murdering people in as brutal a fashion as possible. Even members of Rockstar have claimed that they felt very uncomfortable working on the game. Manhunt was even linked to a murder in the UK at one point. The game was found in the bedroom of teenager Warren LeBlanc after he murdered his friend Stefan Pekira. This led a lot of people to believe that the game was responsible for driving Warren to kill his friend. Rockstar spoke out against these claims, reminding everyone that the game was rated M and was only intended for adults. UK police would later declare that the game was not responsible for the death of Stefan, after it was discovered that the game was not actually found in Warren's room, it was actually discovered in the victim's room. Still, the damage had already been done by this point, and Manhunt would go on to become arguably the most controversial game of all time, thanks in no small part to all the negative press surrounding it. But is Manhunt really as disgustingly violent as many people believe? Well, let's find out. Manhunt follows the story of death row inmate James Earl Cass. At the beginning of the game, Cass is about to be executed. However, his execution is a hoax and he awakens in an empty room with the only voice in the area coming from an earpiece on a table. James puts on the earpiece and is introduced to someone calling himself the director. We later find out that the director is actually a famous movie producer named Lionel Starkweather. Starkweather wants James to play a little game for him, in exchange for his eventual freedom. The game he wants you to play basically involves hunting down and slaughtering the criminals of Carcer City in as brutal a fashion as possible, while he films these executions using hidden cameras littered all around the city in order to produce the ultimate snuff film. So right out of the gate, the game has an incredibly fucked up premise, and Manhunt wastes no time in demonstrating to you why there's so much controversy surrounding the game. The first thing you'll notice once you start the game are the controls. They suck. They might have been okay back in 2004, but in 2019 they are borderline archaic. There is no fully rotatable 3D camera in Manhunt. The right stick simply enters first person while standing still and slightly pans the camera in a certain direction while you're moving. The camera sucks and it can make the shooting and stealth a lot more awkward than it needs to be. Manhunt also uses tank controls for some goddamn reason. I mean, you can technically strafe, 
but it requires you to use the L2 and R2 buttons, which never felt very good to me. The controls don't ruin the game by any means, but they definitely take some getting used to. So shortly after starting the game, you'll find a plastic bag lying on the ground. And let me tell you, you won't be using it to hold your shopping. <laughs> you then find a guy with his back turned to you, and you are asked to kill him using the plastic bag. This is where you are introduced to the execution system. You execute people in Manhunt by holding the X button while you're behind them. The longer you hold the X button, the more gruesome the execution will be. So if you only tap the X button, you will get a hasty execution, where James kills his target as quickly as possible. This style of execution is useful if there are a lot of enemies around you and you need to take out your target quickly. By holding the X button for 2 seconds, you will perform a violent execution. These are a bit more gory than the hasty executions. Finally, by holding the X button for 5 seconds, you will perform a gruesome execution. These are the most brutal executions in the game, and some of them really cross the line. The violence can be disturbing at times, but it still has a fantastical nature to it. Some of the executions are so over the top that they come across as more humorous than realistic. I mean, contrary to what Rockstar probably believes, I don't think it's possible to cause someone's head to explode from hitting it with a baseball bat. Also, I think it would take a bit longer than 3 seconds to decapitate someone with barbed wire. Manhunt is incredibly violent at times, but in no way is it similar to real world violence, and I think that's important to remember. I think my main issue with all the violence in Manhunt is that it's mandatory. You need to partake in it constantly. You can't knock people out or even kill them in a quick and painless fashion. You need to kill your enemies brutally. I understand this logic to an extent. James Earl Cass is being forced to play the director's little game and he needs to follow his orders in order to gain his freedom. But even after James escapes the director and his fucked up little game, he's still driving crowbars into skulls. The only real difference now is that the skulls belong to the police instead of criminals. Yes, they're crooked cops, but the point still stands that you are unable to take a non-lethal approach during any point in Manhunt, and that feels very odd for a stealth game. One of the most controversial aspects of Manhunt is the ranking system. Simply put, the game gives you a star rating at the end of every level based on how brutally you murdered the enemies in that stage. So if you needed any more proof that Manhunt encourages you to take pleasure in the gruesome murder of your enemies, the ranking system is that proof. Violence is the most important part of Manhunt. It really is as simple as that. And you know what? I fucking love that. I love the balls Rockstar had on them to create a game like this. The violence isn't just thrown in there to be controversial. Manhunt is a horror game, and it's the disturbing violence that adds to that horror. The world of Manhunt was designed to show the real depths of human depravity, how fucked up humans can be. It doesn't shy away from this very dark side of entertainment. Because guess what? Snuff films exist. I even saw one a few years ago. And it was deeply disturbing. This shit exists in the real world, and I'm grateful Rockstar were brave enough to tackle such a fucked up topic. Anyways, Manhunt is not just a murder simulator. It's a stealth game, and a damn good one too. When you're not murdering in Manhunt, you will more than likely be hiding in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Manhunt uses a very simple light and dark system for its stealth gameplay. Similar to something like Splinter Cell, darkness is your friend in Manhunt. When you are out in the light, enemies will spot you from a mile away, so your best bet is to stay in the shadows and knock on a wall to draw an enemy over to your position, and then take him out when his back is turned to you. The problem with this approach is that it's way too overpowered. It's way too easy to just knock on a wall to lure an enemy over to your position, wait in the shadows for him to arrive, take him out, and then repeat the exact same process for the next enemy. Enemies will almost never enter shadowy areas, even when they're standing literal inches from you. It's ridiculous. That's not to say that Manhunt is easy. In fact, it's probably one of the most challenging games ever made, with the second to last stage in particular being one of the most ball-crushingly difficult levels I've ever experienced in a video game. 
Later stages also mix up the gameplay enough that cheap tactics like knocking on walls will no longer work. Guards start using flashlights to spot you in shadowy areas. A lot of late game stages even start you without a weapon, forcing you to leave your comfort zone to find something to take down your foes with. It's good shit. The first hour or so of Manhunt may be incredibly dull, but once the challenge starts ramping up, it becomes one of the most intense horror experiences ever made. Whenever you're spotted by an enemy, you have two options. You can either fight back, in which case you will probably die if you don't have a gun, because hand-to-hand -hand combat is terrible, and enemies will overwhelm you very quickly. Or you can run. Running from enemies is definitely the safer option, but it's also fucking terrifying, because these guys are fast, and it can be incredibly difficult to lose them sometimes. When Manhunt is firing on all cylinders, it's easily one of the scariest games I've ever played, and that's thanks in large part to the almost suffocating atmosphere Manhunt effortlessly creates. Carcer City is one of the biggest shitholes ever created for a video game. It's dark, desolate, and is definitely the kind of place you wouldn't want to end up in life. This city feels hopeless and lifeless, the kind of place where someone comes to die. Manhunt's atmosphere is consistently bleak, and it's one of a very small number of games that have ever made me feel that way, Silent Hill 2 being another obvious example. That doesn't mean Manhunt can't be funny at times, it can, but its humour is pitch black and a lot of people will find it just as disturbing as the violence. A lot of the ramblings of the inmates of an insane asylum made me laugh quite a few times, but it becomes very obvious very quickly that Rockstar is making light of mental health issues when the director quips that you're doing the world a favour taking out all these crazies after blowing the head off an inmate. Do you realise just how much money you saved the city's mental health department? No Barry, not this- That's it Cash, don't let a single nut job back on the streets. Also, having to listen to Starkweather constantly tell you how you're getting him off after killing an enemy got real old real quick. Oh my god, I've had an accident. I'm serious man, you brought me off. That escalated quickly. I'm not a prude in any way, but a lot of the humour in Manhunt made me feel very uncomfortable at times, and I can't imagine a game being made today featuring such content. As violent as Manhunt is, it's very strange that the game all but ditches the execution system halfway through in favour of more traditional third person shooting. There are still pockets of stealth gameplay here and there, but you'll definitely be using guns to take care of most of your foes from the factory level onwards. Shooting is serviceable in Manhunt, but far from ideal. The main issue is that Manhunt employs a lock on system, and sometimes the game simply won't lock on to the enemy you want which can lead to you fiddling with the controls, desperate to lock onto the actual target you want. Shooting is still enjoyable and incredibly intense at times, but it doesn't hold a candle to the stealth gameplay of earlier stages. There is also very little story in Manhunt, and what story is there is just as cruel and fucked up as the rest of the title. At one point during Starkweather's cruel game, James is forced to rescue his family without being spotted by any patrolling guards. If he is spotted, the guards have been ordered to shoot one of his family members. It's a really intense level, and saving all members of James's family really is a monumental task, and if you manage to pull it off, you'll feel like a badass. But even if you do manage to free his entire family, in the next level, Starkweather just shows you a video of all of James's family members being brutally murdered anyways. It's an incredibly cruel moment, and all I wanted was to brutally murder Starkweather after it. That's right, the game actually gave me violent thoughts, and I should briefly talk about how I felt during a lot of the game, because it did cause me to become introspective on more than one occasion. Simply put, I enjoyed violently killing people in Manhunt. I enjoyed it more than I should probably admit to on here. The deadly game of cat and mouse that makes up the core of Manhunt is incredibly engaging. Your enemies are absolute scum, the lowest of the low, and believe me when I say that the criminals in this game want to kill you just as brutally as you kill them. So I'd be lying if I said I didn't derive any pleasure from brutally ending their lives at times. Manhunt is one of the greatest stress relievers I've ever experienced. Had a shit week? Your boss being a dickhead? 
Play Manhunt and take all your stress and anger out on the game. It's incredibly therapeutic. Other games I've played in the past that have helped me when my life was in the shitter include God of War 3, God Hand and Devil May Cry 4. All violent video games by the way. I find it funny that violent video games have actually helped me manage my anger throughout my life instead of pushing me to take my anger out on others. I would describe myself as an angry person a lot of the time. Thankfully, I've calmed down with age, but during my mid-twenties I was out of control and sometimes I feel like the only thing that stopped me from doing something I truly regret was being able to take all my anger and frustration out on video games. Simply put, video games aren't creating criminals and in a lot of cases they're probably saving young people from taking the wrong path in life. Well, unless they like loot boxes that is. I've played Manhunt at least a dozen times in the last decade and not once have I ever felt like killing people with plastic bags or baseball bats. I'd even argue that violent movies have negatively affected me more than any video game. Inside is one of my favourite horror movies but never in a million years would I recommend anyone actually watch the fucking thing. It's a film that still causes me to burst into tears every time I watch it. Not because it's a beautiful or emotional movie, but because the ending is so shockingly cruel and over the top that it's the only logical reaction any sane person can have after seeing it. Well, either that or absolute disgust. My point is that video games are simply not to blame for the world's problems, and I'd even argue there would be a lot more real-world murders going on without them. I'm not American, and so I feel like I have no right commenting on how America should handle its gun problem. It would be so easy to say something like, make guns illegal in America, but it is their right to own firearms and we have to accept that. No one likes having their rights taken away, so I understand to a degree why some Americans are against guns being made illegal over there. I hope America's gun problems are eventually resolved and that they can return to feeling somewhat safe in their own country. But until then, leave video games out of the fucking discussion, yeah? Jesus Christ. Oh boy, I actually did it. I got this bloody video out. Sorry for sounding so relieved, but I honestly didn't think it was going to happen. The last week has been hell. So, uh, some of the worst weather in Ireland stopped me basically from recording for nearly a week. I uh, hurt my jaw, so I wasn't able to talk. Uh, my microphone stopped working for some reason. A huge amount of shit happened, and I, and I just thought to myself... Shit, Ben, you're not meant to make this video. It's destiny that you don't make the fucking thing. But um, I wanted to talk about it. It's something I'm passionate about. And But my God, this video took it out of me. So I'm probably going to be taking a break from talk making videos like this for a while. Because I need to focus on college and work and getting my own place. And a huge amount of far more important shit. But I really hope you liked the video. Sorry, this is obviously unscripted. But um, yeah, I just want to quickly mention that... I know it's pointless bringing it up to 1,600 people, but if you like my stuff for some goddamn reason, uh, I do have a Patreon, and I would uh, really appreciate it if you could donate maybe a dollar a month just to uh, keep this ball rolling, I guess. I spend a lot of time on it. I spend a lot of time on my videos, and uh, a bit of money would, you know, would help me buy new equipment and maybe even potentially start doing this full-time, which I would really like. Anyways, I think that's about it. I probably will be doing a vlog later on in the week talking about albums I like and TV shows I like, shit like that. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me, feel free to. I doubt I'll get many, but um, again, I uh, I really hope you liked the video. I, I'm actually quite proud of it, so thanks.